Hi everyone. Welcome to our third lesson in this series on magnetism. Before we start, let's quickly recap what we have discovered so far. Firstly, we have found that there are some materials that are magnetic. That means that these materials experience a force of attraction when placed close to a magnet. Magnetic materials can also be magnetized. In other words, they have the ability to become magnets themselves. We have also found that not all materials are magnetic. Materials that are not affected by a magnet are called non-magnetic materials. In our previous lesson, we used a model of magnetic domains to explain the behavior of magnetic and non-magnetic materials. We also noticed that in magnets, the magnetic domains are all aligned. In non-magnetic materials, the magnetic domains are not aligned and do not change even when a magnet is brought close to this sort of material. Inside a magnetic material, the domains are also randomly arranged. However, when a magnet is brought close to this type of magnetic material, the magnetic domains become aligned, just like the magnetic domains of the magnet. Clearly, a magnet has an effect on an object made from a magnetic material. We also saw that magnets have an effect on each other. Remember, when opposite poles of a magnet are brought close to each other, there is a force of attraction between the magnets. But when poles of the same type are brought close to each other, they repel. We can feel the force of attraction or repulsion between magnets, even when the magnets are not touching each other. We know that these forces are caused by the magnetic domains inside the magnet. In fact, the domains combine to form a region of influence all the way around the magnet. This region of magnetic influence is called a magnetic force field. In this lesson, we will explore the properties of the magnetic force field around different permanent magnets. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to describe and draw a magnetic field. To begin our investigation of the magnetic force field, let's join Aaron at Cybono. Hi guys, I'm standing outside the Cybono Center and I'm checking out this compass. Remember, a compass is really just a magnet that's balancing on a point. The arrow end of the needle points to the north and the tail end points to the south. So using this compass, I can now say that I'm facing north. So we can say that the entrance to the Cybona Center is on the north side of the building. Now let's go inside to have a look at a very interesting apparatus. At the center of this display, there's a strong magnet. The red end represents the North Pole, and the blue end is the South Pole of the magnet. Did you notice that there are lots of little compasses placed around the magnet? Now take a closer look at the direction that these compasses are pointing. What do you notice? Well. Firstly, these compasses are not all pointing towards the entrance, which is north. But there seems to be a pattern. Did you see it? Now let's focus on the region around the north end of the magnet. The compass needles here are all pointing away from the north end of the magnet. Close to the magnet, the compass needles are pointing straight. But notice a little further away, the needles are pointing to the side. Now look at the south end of the magnet. Here the compass needles are pointing towards the magnet. Close to the magnet, the needle points are in line with the magnet. But further away, the needles lie at an angle. Now have a look at the compasses that have been placed between the ends of the magnet. Here the needles are pointing away from the north end and towards the south end. Now would you believe me if I told you that is the big magnet in the middle of the display that's affecting all these compasses around it. Now I'm going to turn the magnet through 90 degrees. Now can you predict what will happen to each of the compass needles? 
Now, try drawing a diagram ne, to show the direction in which the compass needles is going to point when the magnet is being moved. Check to see if your predictions are correct. Look, the compass needles have all moved as the magnet moved. But notice the compass needles at the north end are still pointing away from the magnet. They change direction further away from the north end, turning outwards. Then in the region next to the magnet, the compass needles point away from the north end and lie parallel to the magnet. At the south end, the compass needles are pointing towards the south end. The pattern is the same as before, even though the magnet was moved. Now let's go back to studio to analyze these observations a little more closely. Thanks, Aaron. You have certainly given us lots of things to think about. For example, we now know that compass needles close to a magnet are affected by it. The compass needles did not point in the usual direction from north to south, like the compass Aaron had used outside. They were affected by the magnet. When the magnet moved, the compass needles all changed direction too. This apparatus gives clear evidence that there is a magnetic force field around a magnet. But what does this term, magnetic force field, mean? In everyday language, the word field means an area of land where certain crops grow or animals are kept. But in physics, the word force field refers to a region in space all around an object. So, in this space around this magnet, there's a region of space that this magnet influences. This field is called a magnetic field because only magnets or magnetic materials brought into this region will experience this force. Non-magnetic materials brought into this region do not experience any forces from the magnet. When a free-moving magnet or compass is brought into a magnet's force field, it will experience a force. The force will cause the compass needle to change the direction it is pointing in. The new direction that the compass needle points is known as the direction of the magnetic force field. So the apparatus Aaron used does not only give us evidence for a magnetic force field, but by looking at the direction the compass needles are pointing in, we can also know the direction of the magnetic force field around a permanent bar magnet. To represent this magnetic force field, we can draw in a simple diagram. The rectangle represents the bar magnet. Starting at the north pole of the magnet, we can draw in lines to show the direction of the compass needles at any point around the magnet. Notice that these lines do not cross each other, but they all follow a very similar pattern. At the north pole of the magnet, the compass needles are repelled. They point away from the north. When they are further away from the north pole, the compass needles are deflected because it is attracted to the south pole of the magnet. But there is something else that is very interesting that we can observe when I place a compass on top of the magnet at the south pole. Notice that it points to the North Pole. The compass needle is aligned with the magnetic domains of the magnet. So, the magnetic force field direction outside the magnet is from north to south. But on the inside of the magnet, the field runs from south to north. This magnetic force field does not only have an effect on free-moving magnets, but on magnetic materials too. Here I have some iron filings. This is iron that has been cut into very, very small pieces. This is an ideal magnetic material to demonstrate the presence of a magnetic field. Watch how I do it. First of all, I place a piece of paper over a bar magnet. Next, I sprinkle iron filings over the paper. These bits of magnetic material align themselves along the magnetic field. Can you make out the pattern that is forming? The iron filings are very close together around the ends of the magnet. 
but further away from the magnet, the iron filings spread out. The iron filings form a pattern of curved lines. The lines seem to connect one side of the bar magnet to the other side. Now, I'm sure you'll agree that the pattern the iron filings form is very similar to the pattern of field lines we drew to show the magnetic force field. But the iron filings also give us some other very important information. Notice that the iron filings were mostly clustered around the ends of the magnet. What does this suggest to you? At these points, the magnetic force field is stronger than at any other point in the field. These regions where the magnetic field is the strongest are called the poles of the magnet. If you look at the diagram of the magnetic field lines, you will notice at these regions that the field lines are closer together too. When the field lines are drawn further apart, the magnetic force field is weaker. Let's do a simple experiment to test this idea. I suggest you try this for yourselves too. The apparatus that you will use is very simple. All you need is a bar magnet and some steel paper clips. Look what happens when one paper clip is brought near the south pole of the magnet. The paper clip is attracted to the magnet by a strong force. Now watch what happens when a second paper clip is brought close to the first paper clip. The second paper clip sticks to the first paper clip to form a chain. The first paper clip is attracted to the magnet and has become magnetized by the magnetic force field of the magnet. That's why it is holding onto the second paper clip. Now let's see if we can build a long chain of paper clips attached to the magnet. This chain now contains six paper clips attached to the magnet at the south pole. When even one more paper clip is added to this chain, it falls off. What do you think this tells us about the strength of the magnetic force field at the south pole of the magnet? You should be able to deduce that the magnetic field is strongest closest to the magnet. The strength of the magnetic field decreases quite quickly the further you move away from it. There's one more question about the strength of the magnetic field that this paperclip experiment can help us answer. Do you think that the strength of the magnetic force field is the same at different points along the surface of the magnet? Before we do the experiment, why don't you write down a prediction? Do you think we can build a chain of six paperclips, like the one we built at the South Pole, attached to other points in the magnet? Will all the chains be the same length, or will some be shorter or longer? Take some time to write down your predictions and then test your ideas for yourself. Look at what we find. The longest chains of paper clips are all attached directly to the end of the magnet. In the middle of the magnet, only short chains of paper clips can be made. Clearly, the magnetic force field is strongest at the ends of the magnet. That's why we call these the end poles. This experiment confirms our original thinking when we first started looking at the field lines. Where the field lines are closer together at the poles, the magnetic field is stronger. But further away from the poles, the field decreases in strength. Here the field lines are drawn further apart. Now there's one more thing I need you to remember about magnetic force fields. The magnetic force field is a region of space around a magnet. The magnetic field is not flat like we have drawn it on the diagram, but forms in three dimensions. Although this is difficult to draw on paper, we can see it by looking at this simple apparatus. In this glass container, I have secured a bar magnet so that we can see all around it. Now, I'm going to fill this container with oil and finally sprinkle iron filings over the oil and mix it together. The iron filings sink in the oil and begin to align with the magnetic field of the magnet. When you look from different sides of the glass container, you can clearly see that the magnetic field surrounds the magnet taking up a three-dimensional space. 
Now watch what happens to the iron filings when another magnet is brought close to the outside of the glass container. Here the poles of the magnets are opposite. There is a strong force of attraction between these magnets. Notice that the iron filings are arranged in straight lines between these opposite poles. There is clearly a strong magnetic force field between these two opposite magnet poles. But it is quite a different picture when I change the pole of the magnet outside the glass container. Now the poles of the magnets are the same. Can you see the iron filings are forming curved lines that bend away from each other? The magnetic force fields of the magnets are just as strong as before, but now the magnets are repelling each other. Now for your task today, I would like you to draw two diagrams. In the first diagram, show the field line pattern when two bar magnets are attracting each other. And in the second diagram, show the field line pattern when two bar magnets are repelling each other. Today, we have learnt about the magnetic force field. Now, we are ready to start answering the most important question of all. Why does a free moving magnet, like a compass, point in a particular direction? Well, that question will form the focus of our next lesson. So do join me then. Goodbye.